Hello everyone, I'll continue the series on Wesley Saw with a very exciting game uh, he played against David Navarra in the Tata Steel tournament in 2011, so one year later uh, after the last game I showed you in 2010 from the Spice Cup. And the Tata Steel tournament is of course one of the biggest chess events uh, ever and it's uh, celebrated every year and it's uh, covered uh, a great deal in the media and it's also been called the Wimbledon of chess and it's uh, generally one of the biggest chess events in, in the calendar year and of course it started in the 30s, in the late 30s and it changed the na names a couple of times but uh, the point is that it always attracted the strongest grandmaster and this game was played in group B of the tournament, Group A is reserved for the strongest uh, chess players and of course Wesley So was almost 2700 uh, at the time, David Navarra was 2700 already, so if they weren't strong enough to compete in the A, a group you can, uh, you can imagine who was, so a very strong event in both uh, the main group and the B group. And uh, you can see the, the uh, standings after the last round as well as the lineup of the tournament, there were some very strong names in the lineup, so you can see that um, in the description and I'm going to go over the game now. Uh, Wesley saw he had the white pieces, he opened with pawn to d4, we have knight to f6 by David Navarra, c4, g6, this could now still be uh, the the Grunfeld defense or the King's Indian defense depending on what, on what black does, we have knight to f3, bishop to g7, this is now the King's Indian uh, normal variation, however the game is going to transpose into a new Grunfeld because, because at one point uh, now after g3 uh, where Wesley is preparing to fianchetto his kingside bishop, David Navarra decides to, decides to play d5 and this now transposed to a new Grunfeld because um, usually in the King's Indian black will play uh, d6 and uh, go for a slower uh, setup in the center but this could still be uh, this could still be the eco code e6 to the king's indian defense but that would be debated never mind it's a uh, neo grunfeld by transposition so d5 breaking in the center uh, the normal king's indian uh, normal variation where where white fianchettos would go castles bishop g2 d6 castles uh, knight to c6 this would be the normal setup so if black doesn't go for d5 but after d5 they now play about 10 moves of mainline theory the top top choices both engine wise and if you look at the opening books c takes d5 this is the main move knight takes d5 bishop to g2 fianchettoing the bishop knight b6 Knight to c3, knight to c6, e3 reinforcing the center, never mind that this bishop is still locked down, uh, white has different plans for it, uh, now castles, castles, rook to e8, developing the rook to the most sensible square, rook to e1, a5, and now this is where uh, black gets to choose what to play, uh, white gets to choose what to play, I'm sorry. The main move is what Wesley saw played, that's queen to e2, and this is now preparing the b5 square for the for the knight, and it's also getting away from this uh, from this file because of white, of course, doesn't want to exchange queens. Now we have a4 by black, and here he could have chosen a bishop to e6. This is one of the most active moves, and in fact the most commonly played move, or bishop to g4. This this is a move as well. But now a4 is gaining a lot of space on the on the queen side, which is of course double edged. It is weakening black's. Uh, Black's kingside structure, it's losing a tempo because it's not developing a piece, it's not doing anything as constructive, but it's disrupting white's queenside development and it's also making this position quite uncomfortable in conjunction with the B Grunfeld bishop on the g7 square. Wesley saw the with rook to d1, now wasting a second tempo, changing plans because of, uh, because of a4, of course he first played rook to e1, so you could argue that this is just a waste of tempo, bishop to e6, and here is uh, the move that turned the game around. I think this this is a move uh, many people would consider, but they would be too scared to play it, perhaps. And it's not obvious how uh, White is going to compensate uh, for what he's about to do. And I think this is one of the most instructive points of Wesley Saw's early career. And this shows that he was... Uh, he was a very good chess player at 18, and of course he was already almost 2700, but this is a move which... Uh, only the top grandmasters can make. Here he played d5. And d5 is of course a pawn sacrifice. And uh, you can take uh, you can take with the bishop, you can take with the knight, or you can take the knight on c3. I'm going to show you all, all three options. Firstly, bishop takes c3 simply loses. Because if bishop takes c3, 
Then d takes e6, is losing the queen uh, inevitably, and or losing a piece, losing the bishop or the queen. So let's say bishop f6, e f7, king f7, rook takes d8, this is just losing. You can see that you can't take on c6. So after d5, uh, the second option is to take d5 with the bishop. So after bishop d5, knight takes d5. Knight takes d5, e4 is simply uh, winning for white, of course, you have to play e6, at least uh, getting a pawn for the piece, but now e takes d5, e takes d5, and white has regained, uh, uh, white has gained material, white has a piece for two pawns, so this is simply winning for white. And the last option, which David Navarra, being a strong player, of course, chose, is the option that actually gives up a pawn for white, and... Uh, Wesley so is going to have to prove compensation, but the move is uh, actually, d5 was actually the best move in the position, and now you're going to see why. Of course, David Navarra took with the knight. Now, the difference is that after knight takes d5, if uh, Wesley plays knight takes d5, bishop takes d5, e4, this doesn't work, he isn't winning the piece, because bishop to c4 is attacking white's queen. So, Wesley's best option would be queen to e1, and after queen to b8, you can see that David Navarra is winning simply a pawn up, a central pawn up, in a completely dominant position. So, after knight takes d5, you can't take, because you're not winning the piece back. Wesley played the only move that actually uh, gives white the advantage with the sacrifice, and if I turn on the engine, you can see that white is significantly better, this is plus one for white. Uh, so the move is knight to b5, and this move is now attacking the weakness in in black's position, the c7 square, which is in some positions threatening to fork the knights. It's also threatening simply uh, to to win to win a piece because of e4, because when the knight uh, was was still on c3, if e4 is played, then simply knight takes c3 is attacking white's queen in return, so it doesn't work. So knight to b5 is now a threat, and now uh, black has to do something about his knight, or he has to move the queen. Uh, David Navarra chooses to move the queen, we have queen to c8, and now knight to g5, the only move that keeps the advantage, and uh, this, is, this is the move which, okay, I would consider, and most people would consider, but... I'm not sure that if I saw this position after d5, I would uh, be brave enough to play it and to give up a pawn for this, because I can't see enough compensation here, but Wesley saw obviously, obviously had. So now queen to d8, uh, taking the rook indirectly, of course, and threatening some some ideas with taking the rook if the, if the queen ever moves, so this is actually a good move. We have knight takes e6, grabbing the bishop, and f takes e6. Now taking with the queen is almost completely losing, here's why. If queen takes e6, then rook takes d5, and after rook takes d5, knight takes e7 is just winning. And if you, because you are forking uh, king and rook, and the bishop is attacking the rook as well. And after rook takes d5, uh, of course, you can't simply take the rook, and that wouldn't work. And after uh, white captures on d5, there's nothing else to do, so you are simply, you are simply losing a piece. If queen takes e6. So we have f takes e6 instead, ruining the pawn structure. Now you can already see the compensation in the pawn structure. We have rook to b1, uh, preparing to play b3 and be able to develop the bishop normally, just saving the pawn. And king to h8, this is now a very passive move and uh, in fact a very big mistake. Uh, the point of this move is to get away from this, from this diagonal, because the e6 pawn is obviously weak and he doesn't want to be in check when uh, he loses it, if he does lose it. Now we have bishop to h3 attacking e6 anyway, knight f6, uh, bishop to d2. Uh, rook to a6, now activating the rook, because it's really hard to develop, you can't play queen to d7, because any bishop discovery is going to be killing. And now, uh, in this position, despite uh, Wesley being a pawn down, he is in fact uh, winning, both strategically and positionally. And you can see why. Uh, he has a very strong bishop pair, that's the first thing. And uh, as soon as they get activated properly, let's say bishop to c3, this is going to be a very strong diagonal. Secondly, uh, his knight is my much better than black's last minor piece, let's say this bishop or this knight. The rooks are more active, despite they might look funny, and uh, the major issue of black's position is the completely inactive Queen. and the queen is simply out of play and uh, David Navarra is going to have to work hard to, to activate it. Wesley now continues with bishop to c3. We have a rook to d5, which is okay, a trade of rooks uh, in exchange for for perhaps undoubling pawns, not in this position of course because the queen is pinned to the pawn, but in some positions maybe. And if Wesley doesn't reactivate, immediately he's going to move the queen 
David Novara is going to move the queen, and uh, perhaps this is going to, pos to be possible, let's say queen to g8. So Wesley takes immediately, rook d5, we have knight takes d5, of course, pawn takes d5, loses the queen, knight takes d5. Now bishop takes g7, getting rid of the major defender in black's position, king takes g7, queen to c4, this is now, of course, attacking the knight. Uh, let me just show you with a with a blunder move for black, let's say h6 is played, a nothing move. Then the threat is this, and of course... Of course, black is losing a piece. So after queen to c4, white is actually threatening to grab the knight, so black has to react. And David Navara plays... Uh, I'm sorry, David Navara plays knight to f6. And now, of course, this is saving the knight indirectly. We have rook to d1. King to f7. Uh, queen to f4. Now double attacking the c7 pawn. Uh, rook to b6, attacking the knight. Now we have queen takes a4. Knight to e5, knight to d4, and this is now a major threat uh, in this position. And of course, uh, the threat is, uh, let's say, black takes on b2, rook takes b2, then simply bishop e6 check, queen e6, knight e6, black is losing the queen. So after knight to d4, uh, the b2 pawn can't be taken. And David Navarra plays c5, chasing the knight away. But now we have uh, the second brilliant move of the game, and after d5, this is my second most favorite move. He plays queen to c2, pinning the pinning the pawn to the queen. And this is now amplifying uh, his dominance in the position and the fact that black doesn't really have anything. David Navarra tries rook to d6. We have f4, chasing the knight away. Now knight e to g4, rook to e1, saving the pawn. Of course, the knight still can't be taken because the queen is pinned. We have b6. This is simply reinforcing c5, but it's too passive. Knight to f3, and now threatening to get into this, uh, the weakest square in black's position, the e5 square, which can, of course, is with check for now, but it can be even stronger. And uh, David Navarra helps with that plan. He plays queen to d7, and now, of course, knight to e5 is threatening to grab the queen. Now we have bishop takes g4, getting rid of one defender of the e5 square, and after knight takes g4, simply h3, chasing the knight away. And now uh, knight takes e3 is played, which really doesn't uh, do anything. We have uh, rook takes e3, and here David Navarra resigned. Of course, he can't threaten any checks uh, here with rook to d1, king to g2, rook to d2, because the knight is covering d2 as well, so he can't win the queen for the for the rook if uh, that what he was that's what he was planning. And he's simply a piece down for a pawn and completely lost. But I think that uh, the move d5 and after that the moves queen to c2 and a couple of other moves in the game uh, proved that Wesley Saw was... Uh, Perhaps even as strong as he is today when he was 18. And this is such a high level victory that I think it should be admired. So I think this was a worthy game to show in the series of the of Wesley Saw's uh, chess development. Okay, everybody, I hope you like this game. Uh, stay tuned for more videos on Wesley Saw, Bobby Fischer and Jose Raul Capablanca. And see you later. Bye-bye. Thanks very much.